crowding our minds. This is your chance. Let's lay it down at his feet and just come and sit at his lap or rest your head on his lap. Imagine, use your imagination right now, your childlike attitude. How would you embrace your dad that is waiting for you? How would you tell him? I love you. Maybe not even opening your mouth, but just opening your heart for him. So I invite you, come on, close your eyes and start telling him, start communicating with him. And if you don't say a word to him, but you just open your heart and embrace him, he knows that. Father, we're here. We're here because we know you are waiting for us. And we come in different shapes and forms, Lord, with so many things in our minds and our hearts. Some we are tired and worried. Some we are maybe stressed out because we have a really rough week. Whatever it might be, but you are the Father of love. You are the Father of mercy. Lord, and you, you are here, and you want to embrace us, Lord, and you want to fill us with the love that only you can give. So come on, Lord, come on, move, Holy Spirit, and let us be open. Let us be open to give you our love, our praise, our worship, because you deserve it, Lord. You deserve it. You are worthy. You are worthy. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Let's just continue and add to the worship. Just lift your hands, palm up this morning. Just allow the Holy Spirit just to touch you this morning in this place. It's you, God. God, we just want every song that we sing, every word that we say, be exactly what you want and what you want to hear this morning. Increase. Increase. The Holy Spirit, just wash away every concern, every weight that the world's tried to put on us.
voice to sing it out. Jesus, we love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. Come on, let's lift up a shout of praise this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Let's give him a shout of praise this morning. 
Lord, there's nothing better than you. Come on. Woo! Hallelujah. <laughs>
can I do for you? What can I bring to you? What kind of song would you like me to sing? I'll dance a dance for you, pour out my love for you. What can I do for you, beautiful king? Cause I can't thank you enough. Cause I can't thank you enough. What can I do for you? What can I bring to you? What kind of song would you like me to sing? I'll dance a dance for you, pour out my love for you. What can I do for you, beautiful king? Cause I can't thank you enough. Cause I can't thank you enough. What can I do for you? What can I do for you? What can I bring you? kind of song would you like me to sing? I'll dance and dance for you, pour out my love for you. What can I do for you, beautiful king? Cause I can't thank you enough. Cause I can't thank you enough. And you don't have to do a thing Just simply be with me And let those things go They can wait another minute Wait This moment is too sweet Please stay here with me Love with me a little longer Wait This moment is too sweet. Please stay here with me. Love me a little longer. Cause I'm in love with you. So wait. So I wait here at your feet. It's where I wanna be. Your voice I'll follow. Jesus, you're everything to me. I'll pour out my life. I worship at your feet, loving you a little longer. So I wait, so I wait here at your feet. It's so where I want to be, your voice I'll follow. Jesus, you're everything to me. Now pour out my life. I worship at your feet. Love you a little longer. Cause I'm in love with you. So wait. So wait. This moment is too sweet. Please stay here with me, love me a little longer, cause I'm in love with you. Wait, so wait, this moment is too sweet, please stay here with me, love me a little longer, wait. This moment is too sweet. Please stay here with me. Love me a little longer. Wait and wait. This moment is too sweet. Please stay here with me. Love me a little longer. Cause I'm in love with you. I'm in love with you Cause I'm in love with you Cause I'm in love with you
This moment is too sweet. And wait. Lift your voice. This moment is too sweet. Declare that over yourself. Please stay here with me. Love me a little longer. Wait. And wait. This moment is too sweet. Please stay. So I wait here at your feet. It's where I want to be. Your voice I follow. Jesus, you're everything to me. So I'll pour out my life. I'll worship at your feet. Love me. I'm in love with you. If you would just bow your heads and just keep your eyes closed and just focus your mind and your heart just to the just to the Lord. Picture this perfect loving Father. There's a there's a tenderness in the room. There's a tenderness in the room of the Father right now. And I just want to allow the Holy Spirit to just wash over you with the waterfall of His love. And those of you that are watching online, just do the same thing. Just close your eyes, relax wherever you are, sit back. Picture yourself falling back into the arms of the Father. I really have a, a strong sense that Jesus wants to heal some people not physically just yet I know he wants to do that too but just where love has been misused in your life I just I just sense there's there's a young woman that's either watching online or perhaps in the room that you've been told that you were loved with an ulterior motive to get something out of you and it's, it's hurt you and it's traumatized you. And sometimes when you hear even the word Father, you hear the word being loved, it, it causes an adverse reaction. Jesus is here. God is love. He's perfect and love conquers all and love heals all. And Maybe it's for some men in, in the sound of my voice as well. I just, I just, I just see this... I just see this tenderness of the Father's hand upon you right now just sweeping over you and washing away the, the, the counterfeit love that caused trauma in your life. He's just breaking that off of you right now. His love is pure. His love is perfect. His love has no agenda except to love. So Father, I just pray for healing of the heart we're the most precious thing love who you are was used as a tool for self-serving motives and I just break that off of anyone that's been abused and has been a has had a hard time understanding and receiving your love I just break that off right now in the name of Jesus and, and I believe you're revealing to, to hearts and minds and emotions right now the pureness of your love and who you are. 
For you so loved the world, you sent your son, you sent the best. Your love conquers all, your love cannot be measured. Nothing can separate us from your love. While we were yet sinners, you first loved us. So Father, I just, I just pray that you would just take a moment and just wash away, wash away the hurts from the abuse of the misuse of that most beautiful thing, love. In Jesus' name, amen. Thirty-four days ago, to be exact, I started going online every morning live between 7 and 9, praying for the increase of revival. And um, people were watching us around the world as they are now. And the short version of this, someone, you can go ahead and be seated. Someone was watching us from Brooklyn, New York, while they were in their basement of their home in quarantine because of COVID-19. And they had... Um, According to the email they sent me this week, they had uh, every symptom that was listed and in the extreme measure, very a tremendous amount of pain. And at the end of one of these live sessions, we offered prayer for anybody that had COVID and that they would be healed. And they wrote this week that shortly after we prayed, all of the symptoms went away. And then they went and got tested, and uh, they were totally healed of COVID-19. So. <laughs> right, so praise God. God heals. That's it. Ears are 100%. Our precious sister down front was watching Todd White. How many of you know who Todd White is? And it was one of those where he goes out and does the kingdom and was praying for someone to be healed of hearing loss and you were scheduled to have hearing aids done because of your loss of hearing and as you were praying you said I want that too and the Lord totally healed her hearing and she's at 100% and doesn't need hearing aids yeah. so if you're in this room today or you're watching online I can't see if you raise your hand online but you can tell us what your need is, but if you're here this morning, you're watching online, I want you to just raise your hand if you need healing in your body for anything. You need healing in your body for anything. Raise your hand. Just hold it up real high so we can see who you are. Just keep it up. Good, good, good. All right, you see those hands? Just stretch your hand out towards them. And uh, just right now, we're just going to begin to believe for healing. So, Father, in the name of Jesus... <laughs> I stand on Psalm 103 that says you'll heal all sickness and disease. I'm reminded of Peter's shadow that healed people and set people free from the demonic. I'm reminded of the handkerchiefs and aprons that Paul worked in that were taken to people and they were healed and delivered from devils. So it's not a matter of distance whether we do or do not lay hands on people. We just declare the greatest name that's above every name including any disease, and somebody yell out, Jesus. So it's in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the risen Savior, that we declare healing in bodies that are in this room and that are online, in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. Can we just go wild for Jesus? Wow. All right. If you end up getting healed online, let us know in the comments. Go to our website. You go to the bottom and email us. We love, 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 love hearing testimonies. If you're in this room, find me, one of our leaders, and, uh, and tell us what happened. Can we give the Lord just another praise? Wow, what a... <laughs> what a tender time. You know, we look back at these recent weeks and how God has moved so powerfully and and I'm just coming in going, man, I wonder what he's going to do next. And it's always awesome and it's always new and it's, it's always fresh. Listen, this is not cheerleading because I'm going to ask you to do it again. But the King of Kings, Jesus Christ, is in this room. He's here. The kingdom is here right now. It's right now. 
such a privilege. Nothing like his presence, amen? If you have ever served in any branch of the military, would you please stand just for a moment? Served in any branch of the military, yeah. Yeah, let's give them a big hand clap, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. Greater love has no man than this, that he lay his life down for his friends. We celebrate Memorial Day weekend. We're the land of the free because the brave left their homes. And some didn't return. So today we just take another moment and bow our heads and we thank you, Father, for the ultimate sacrifice of men and women throughout the decades in the history of this great country that left their homes to serve, to protect. And those that are left behind, that are in the sound of my voice, that lost a loved one due to service, we thank you for the ultimate sacrifice and we pray the peace that surpasses understanding in this moment. And as we celebrate Memorial Day and Memorial Day weekend with barbecuing and going out and boating, and I think it honors them to celebrate the freedom that we have. So those that are serving, we pray that no weapon formed against them shall prosper. Pray for a hedge of protection to encamp around them. We pray for mighty warring angels to be charge over them. And for every mother and father and husband and child that has a loved one overseas right now, may the peace that surpasses understanding envelop them. And we call them home safely in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. Wow. I'm a mess up here. I don't know how you guys are doing out there, but uh, it's a good mess, so you're just going to have to bear with me. I'd rather be real than religious. Is that all right? Um, I've got a couple of announcements, but before I do that, I know we have some first-time guests this morning. It's, it's so good to have you with us for the very first time. If you're a first-time viewer, let us know. This is your first time watching. Let us know where you're from. And uh, if you have any prayer requests, put those in, in the comment field as well. But if you're in the room and you're here for the first time, would you lift up your hands so we can get some information about the church right here, right here, all right? Let's so make sure we get over here. Keep your hand up until we, until we get to you. All right, thank you, Chabelle. Let's give our, our guests a big hand clap. We're so glad that you're with us. Yeah. Inside that visitor pack is some information about us, and there's a card we'd like you to fill out, and uh, we'd like you to turn it in into the offering bag that we're going to be passing around uh, here a little bit. So while you're doing that and you're preparing for your offering, if you need an envelope, lift up your hand, hold it up real high till one of our ushers gets to you. There's a graphic that's going to be coming up any moment that can show you different ways to give. Those of you that are watching online, you can go to our website. There's a Donate tab on the very top, and we pray that you'll uh, support the work that God's doing here. And while you're preparing you, uh, for your offering, let me just uh, make a couple of announcements. This Wednesday at 7 p.m., uh, this is the last Wednesday of the month, and we've been fasting every Wednesday and then coming together for awesome worship. Do you appreciate our worship team? And just give them another hand. That's so good. And uh, then we're praying for revival, uh, not revival to come. Let me just say that again. We're not praying for revival to come because it's here. We're praying for it to increase. Somebody yell out, more Lord. More Lord. So Wednesday at 7 o'clock. And then this Saturday from 8.30 to 3.30 here in the sanctuary and overflow in the fellowship hall. If needed, we're having a one-day conference. We've done this in the past. It's called the School of Demonstration. And uh, we really believe it is the leading of the Holy Spirit for us to have this conference on the weekend of Pentecost because a week from today is Pentecost Sunday. And I don't, I've been just having this childlike expe ex expectation that something amazing is going to happen. Something amazing is already happening here today. But Saturday from 8.30 to 3.30, um, we're going to start with worship. We're going to start right on time, so come early. And uh, after worship, we're going to have a few sessions in the morning. 
Uh, Roberts Lairdon's going to be one of our speakers. Rick Pearson, who is behind me, that has a big heart for evangelism, along with Amber. They're going to do a session together on power evangelism. Um, and then Angela Muncy, who is the director of the Manatee Healing Rooms, is going to speak. Then we're going to do a quick 45-minute off-site lunch. Uh, so go somewhere quick where you can uh, get back right away. And then from the rest of the afternoon, I'm going to do two sessions and what this is about is the emphasis is going to be on evangelism and equipping you to share the gospel with love, with wisdom, and miraculous power. Uh, like I said, it's something we've done over the years, but we've decided moving forward, we're going to make this an annual conference on the weekend of Pentecost. So we've put this together with about three weeks notice, so that's why we're only doing one day, and, uh, but next year... We're already praying and, and talking to some other people well in advance uh, about possibly coming. So this is going to be powerful. I want to encourage you to come. I want to encourage you to bring other people, whether they're saved or not, believers that are hungry for more. How many of you just read the Gospels in the book of Acts and go, man, I want to do the stuff? How many of you want to do the stuff? Well, it, the stuff is there for everybody to do because the same Jesus that lives in the great evangelists and Catherine Kuhlman's and Randy Clark's of today live inside of you, live inside of children. So the other thing I really felt on my heart is that, you know, if your kids are able to sit through a full-day conference, I really would love to see children in the conference because at the end of the day, we're going to do a time of impartation for you to go out. So there's a lot more that we'll discuss then. Then Saturday, then Sunday morning will be our service, and then Sunday night at 6, yay, we're going back to worship encounter and communion service on Sunday night. So that's going to be fun. So a lot of good things, a lot of good things are coming up. How many generous givers do we have in the room? How many generous givers do we have online? Where's, uh, where's Tom Hayes? Tom, come up. He's got a... A really great testimony. You know he's committed to giving his tithes and offerings when he carries around his own personal offering bag. <laughs> well, there's only two ushers, so after I'm done, I'm going to collect. <laughs> so let's see. I have a couple of testimonies. Um, my girlfriend, Nancy, excuse me if I get emotional, but it's a toughie. She's been ill for quite some time, and, and uh, she hasn't been able to eat. And, or digest food for quite a while. Well, her doctor told her, because she's lost 30 pounds, that she's going to need a uh, feeding tube. And I rebuked that statement. And I'm saying no feeding tube. I'm saying come to my house and eat what I cook for you, and you're going to gain weight. So guess what? She's been at my house the last two nights in a row, and she <laughs> ate dinner. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. It's so good. Uh, Okay, then I've got another testimony. I love you, Nancy. Uh, last Wednesday, a couple days ago, uh, these guys were up here, and afterwards I went up to George to pray for his hips because I want his hips to be replaced before he has surgery, right? <laughs> well, he said, Tom, I, I got a word from the Holy Spirit, and, and I guess it's for you because you came up here, and the word was long boat. And I'm like, hmm, that's a weird one from the Holy Spirit, right? But turned out the next day, I was going to show a long boat on Long Boat Key. So I went to the long boat on Long Boat Key and I sold it. Hallelujah. <laughs> thank you, Holy Spirit, and thank you, George, for giving me that word. Yeah, so how does that tie into an offering? Well, I'll tell you how. First things first. First, you have to start tithing 10%. My first tithe was $7.50. That was because of you about nine years ago. And the next day, I got a check for $10,800 to pay off the tax on my property in Michigan. Hallelujah. That was my first tithe. So you can believe I'm still tithing. Um, but in addition to tithing, you can give offerings or what I call plant seeds in this last two weeks, I planted two seeds. Each one of them was $20. And so far, the return that the Lord is bringing me on that $40 is close to $50,000. So, 
So I'm just going to say Larry Campbell's prayer, and, and then this is really directed to the non-tithers out there, because you don't know what you're missing. So, <clears throat> come Holy Spirit, fill us with the fire of your love. Send and pour forth your spirit within us, and we shall be recreated, and we will renew the face of the earth in a glorious praise to you, Jesus. Amen. Bless the gift and the giver. Oh, ushers, you can wait on the congregation. presence is all I need, it's all I want, it's all I seek without it, without it there's no me. Your presence is the air I breathe, it's the song I sing, love I I need your presence is all I need it's all I want all I seek without it without it there's no me your presence is the air I breathe the song I sing
presence is all I need, it's all I want, it's all I seek without it, without it there's no Well, good morning again. Um, before I just get into this, just one more little blurb about the conference next Saturday. Um, one of the things that we've done in the past is we've had at the end of the conference, we have people pray for those that are at the conference that need to be healed. But the people that we choose first are people that never prayed for the sick before or, or never had breakthrough. And uh, every time we've done that, they prayed for the very first time we've seen people get healed. And uh, this is a big deal. Um, if you study the words of Jesus in the Gospels and he talks about evangelism, he says, go out and do these things. And, and we'll, we'll share a little bit about that today. Um, I'm just so thrilled this week with what God has done and the reports that we're getting financially, physically. But, man, I'm just thrilled about that email about uh, the, the healing of COVID-19. Can we just give the Lord just another hand clap for that? That's, that's just so good. I refuse to surrender to any sickness and disease, specifically this virus by using the term, the new normal. I will continue to declare the old normal of the ancient of days, who heals all of your diseases according to Psalm 103, verse 3. Amen? Amen. Today's message is titled, The Language of Revival. The Bible says that life and death are within the tongue. So this is not only admonishing us and encouraging us not to say bad things that can actually cancel out prayers. I've been in prayer meetings where people have prayed and then I hear their conversation a little bit later on and they actually cancel out what they just prayed by saying the opposite. And I don't mean that to shame anyone, I mean that to, sh to sharpen our swords in regards to prayer and declaration. You uh, grow up as I did with a dad who I had the privilege to lead to the Lord before he died, but when I was a child I was reminded how stupid I was by him on a regular basis. And it reflected in my early years in school with my grades. When you read my report card, it, it came into alignment with what he reminded me of on a regular basis. And then through a mentor in sports, I was being encouraged and being told, you know, you're smarter than you think and just encouraged and, and also threatened that if I wanted to continue to do the sport that I had to get my grades up. And I went from a D and F student to uh, an A and B student and was on the honor roll and even hit the dean's list uh, at, at the end through, yeah, yeah. I just needed to hear somebody say you're smart. Amen. That's right. So when we talk about revival, when we talk about the kingdom of God, when we talk about our faith, we, we have a language that we need to adhere to. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And then there's something about declaring it out loud. If you read your Bible, and I hope you do, I would encourage you to read it out loud. It's wonderful to read it silently and meditate it on your heart, and, and all of that is scripturally based, but there's something about walking around your house if uh, people are sick in it and you declare out loud Psalm 103. If there are people at your work or in your neighborhood or wherever you are that are fearful of getting sick, especially this virus, there's something about opening up to Psalm 91 and declare the whole thing out loud. Amen. There's power, power in what you and I say or don't say and how we say it. Amen. So we are not praying for revival to come. We are praying for revival to increase. And I think in part... We have to understand that there is actually a language for revival that can help it perpetuate and grow and go from glory to glory or can have hindrance and quench the Holy Spirit. 
there is a wonderful gift that is a powerful gift and a dangerous gift all in one. It's called our free will. We get to choose what we're going to do or not do. We're going to choose what we're going to say or not say or how we're going to say it. And this free will that God has given us can either increase life in our own lives or the lives of others, or it can decrease it. For years, I've been saying, I I just refuse to say, well, it's flu season. Because I am tied into another world. My citizenship, according to Scripture, is in heaven. So every day is health day in the kingdom of God. Because there's no sickness, there's no tears, and there's no sorrow. Amen? Amen? So there is no flu season in my life, and I can't tell you how many times I have felt something come on me that felt like I was getting that F word that I just said. And I would put my hand on my chest and I'd say, in Jesus' name, I'm healed. And I would literally immediately feel it lift and I wouldn't get sick. I talk a lot about healing here and this is not something new. This is something that the Lord has used both my wife and I over the years, even when we were in the youth ministry back in the 80s at Harvest Temple. It's important for saints to be healthy because we can get more done. Satan comes to kill, steal, and destroy. But Jesus said, I've come to give you life and give it to you more abundantly. Did you know that stress, what that fear causes stress, and stress lowers your immune system? That's why he has so well orchestrated some of the fear mongering through certain outlets about this virus, because if he can keep you afraid, he can lower your immune system and you're more susceptible to get the virus. That's just exposing darkness. I'm not interested in spirituality. I'm interested in Jesus operating in my life. And I just want to proclaim this again. There's only one way to the Father. There's only one way to heaven. There are not many roads. There's not a stair, uh, a stairway to heaven. I don't care how popular the song was. He is the way, the truth, and the life. And every other leader of every other religion has one thing in common. They're still dead and they're still in their grave. But Jesus rose from the dead. And he said, when you've seen me, you've seen the Father. And he said, you don't have to wait to die to have heaven on earth or he wouldn't have told us to pray, thy kingdom come. Say it with me. Thy kingdom come. On earth as it is in heaven. Well, in heaven, there's no sickness, there's no disease, there's no anxiety. Nobody's nervous. God's not nervous. He doesn't pace the throne room. God does not bite his nails and go, what are we going to do now? Did you hear the latest news? Or not accurate news. He's in charge. He's still in charge, but he has delegated control by his own will for you and I to co-labor with him to do something about it on the earth. The greatest commission is thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. And when we understand the greatest commission, we'll be more empowered and equipped and motivated, charging with Holy Ghost fire to see the other commissions come to pass. Amen? Every time I move away, this thing keeps turning, so I guess I'm supposed to stay away from my notes for a while and continue to go down rabbit trails, but bear with me. (laughs) The language of revival. What's coming out of your mouth? What's the meditation of your heart? The mouth speaketh, the Bible says. The speaketh is the new King James, or the old King James. We don't talk that way anymore. But out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So what is the meditation of your heart? Do you spend time just thinking about his goodness and his kindness and his love? I love meditating on the services that we've had. Not living in the past because I can't wait for the fresh touch. But I like to think about those services of old. I like to go all the way back to when I was a first young believer in the 80s. and, And I can just remember these encounter moments and I relive them again. I don't relive them to, for the good old days. I don't, I'm thankful for the good old days, but I'm looking forward to the new things that he's doing as well. Amen. So what is revival? Revival is the heart of the Father simply made manifest, which is thy kingdom come. 
Webster Dictionary says that it's an act of reviving. Well, that's going to have to be a dictionary genius to figure that one out. The state of being revived. How many of you felt revived during worship? That is revival. What is revival? Revival is the presence of the Lord when we sing a song. So those of you that are new to the church watching online and maybe you're going, how long are they going to sing songs? We're not singing songs. We're loving on the one that sits on the throne through song. And if you're tapping your watch during corporate worship, that would make me think you probably don't have a lot of secret intimate worship on your own. I'm in enough trouble by just saying it once, George. <laughs> yeah. Carve out more time. Gosh, I can't, I can't beat that live horse enough because it wants to run. Revival is a new presentation of something old is what Webster says. Well, this is, he's called the Ancient of Days. This is an old book. But how many of you have read that same scripture that you've read for years and all of a sudden, out of nowhere, you see something that you never saw before? You're experiencing revival. Revival is not a series of meetings meant to last for six months and then die out. That is not biblical revival. We're supposed to go and designed to go from glory to glory. We are designed to be in promotion, perpetual promotion in the kingdom of God of the increase of his government. I know I say this about every week, but do you believe it? I know you do. Praying for revival is not praying for something to happen. Rather, it's believing that someone is already here and wants to manifest in greater measure. If God is as big as the Bible says he is, and he's, let me be careful here, at the end of the book of the Gospel of John, they write that we cannot write down everything Jesus did because it's so much. There's no book or volumes, and I will put it in modern-day vernacular, there is no hard drive, terabyte, gigabyte. There is not enough data storage that can possibly store everything that Jesus is, everything that the Father is, and everything the Holy Spirit is in your life and mine. And he has chosen us to be holy containers of all of that I've just said. Hallelujah. This is the language of revival. Somebody yell out, woo. Somebody yell it out backwards. I think it's still woo. Psalm 85, verse 6 and 7 in the Passion. Revive us again, O God, exclamation point. Why don't we read it out loud together? One, two, three. One, two, three. Revive us again, O God. I know you will. Give us a fresh start. Then all your people will taste your joy and gladness. Pour out even more. Pour out even more of your love on us. Reveal more of your kindness and restore us back to you. Well, would you just celebrate those two verses like wildfire, people that are on fire and in love with God? Amen. The language of revival. Specifically, I just feel this burning revival in the body of Christ to reach the lost. There is a awakening. We are in the beginning of the third great awakening. Quit praying for it to come. You pray for something to come that's already here, you get frustrated thinking God's not answering your prayers. The, the sound system still on when I said that last, that last part, amen? I don't pray for an open heaven because the heaven was made, was rent in open when Jesus said it is finished. What I do pray for is a greater manifestation of an open heaven that I already live under. So in regards to evangelism, right when we were worshiping at the very end, I just was closing my eyes, and I, and I, I, I know this sounds common because we've heard this before, but when we were worshiping, in my mind's eye, I don't know if it was a vision or just something the Lord showed me, but I, I just saw this huge, huge harvest of wheat, but it was standing up tall and straight. In other words, it was ripe for the picking. We are in the harvest that is ripe 
for the picking. The world is hungry for what you and I carry. And every one of us has to have the great third awakening now that he wants to use you and I now. He wants to use every believer now to help bring in the greatest harvest in the history of the church since it all started on the book of Acts. I am telling you with great confidence, we are in the beginning of the third great awakening. We are in the beginning of the greatest revival the church is going to ever see. I've been saying it for weeks that this last Easter service 2020 was the most attended service in the history of the church. Why? Because millions of people were watching it online. The devil could not shut us down. He overplays his hand and he did it again. Of the increase of his government, there will be no end. Not the devil, but the increase of God's government, which is what? The kingdom of God, which is what? Heaven on earth being manifest. You have not seen anything yet. I don't care what you've seen on TV, what revival you've been to, and they're all glorious and great, and we thank God for them. But we are in a season where, church, we are going to see things that they dreamt about in the Old Testament. We're living in the time of history where God has chosen this moment and this hour to use you and I to change history and be history makers for individuals, for cities, for communities, states, nations, and the earth. Somebody say with me, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Let's give the Lord a hand clap and a praise offering. This is the language of revival. <laughs> John Wimber said, faith is spelt R-I-S-K. So one of the things I want to stick on, I don't know if this is going to be a I never know anymore. I, I just, oh, we're going to have a series for a second. Quit doing that. But I think we may stay on this thought of the language on revival. But one word that I really want to emphasize today is risk. Everybody yell out risk. risk. I was worked up into a preaching lather either last Sunday or, or the Sunday before we were talking about revival and you were just amening back and you were really encouraging me. And then I, I might have been last Sunday and I said, all right, how many of you are ready to pay the price for revival? You remember how that shout just got a, a little bit lower? Because you want to see the price before you order it, right? That's the way we're brought up. Well, part of the price is risk. You know, we, we've heard it. I've heard it said in the corporate world, which I was very successful in years before I started the church, that with no risk, no reward. I would challenge to believe that in some part, no risk, no revival. Now, let me qualify that. God can just break into the deadest church, the deadest situation, and he can just breathe fire. And I mean, it doesn't matter what language you've been using or not. If God chooses to burst forth, nothing can stop that. But he has chosen to co-labor with us. Amen. He's chosen us to believe. Do you know what the believer's job is? <laughs> Thank you for helping out. The believer's job is to believe. Amen? Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. Somebody say a women. He wants everybody to be included in spreading the fire of revival. Number one. Relentless risk. We're going to talk about risk. Number one is relentless risk. I don't give up no matter what has happened or not happened. Matthew chapter 10, verse 7 and 8. Jesus is speaking and he said, As you go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. In other words, it's here. When did he say to do it? As you go. It's the ministry of as you go. Watch this, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons freely you've received and freely give. Yesterday at uh, 6.30 in the morning, I received a phone call from our chief of police and one of our sergeants who's been a veteran on the police force for, for many, many years had some... Um, non-work related surgery done on his back and uh, there were some complications afterward and he went back to the emergency room yesterday early in the morning and he had a blood clot and he passed away. 
I, uh, I have prayed over my 10 years of being the chaplain for the Braden Police Department that we would never lose an officer in the line of duty, and we haven't, and I praise God for that. But for me, this was <clears throat> the first officer that was on active duty in our department that, that uh, we saw go. And uh, the chief said, you know, if, you, if you'd like to come down, you can. We're, we're down at the hospital. And I uh, immediately got up and, you know, splashed some water on my face and got dressed. And I began to quote that passage of Scripture. And I said, honey, I'm, I'm getting ready to go. And I told her what happened. I go, would you pray for me that I have the opportunity to be alone with him and that God would show his goodness and power because I'm going to pray for him to rise. And while we have seen that breakthrough here several times, praise God for it, that was yesterday's miracle. So I got there and um, immediately, without even asking, I was saying, would you like to go in there by one of the officers? And I said, absolutely. And they left, they shut the door and let me in there with them alone. And I learned that he's Christian, and I just began to pray. And I began to declare the way I saw Jesus do it, rise up, Lazarus, come forth. I did all of the things that I know how to do. Did all the things that I've prayed before where I've seen breakthrough for healing, and even someone that was supposed to be dead in a coma come back out of it and have no brain loss. And I didn't see him rise. And then I went out and went to see the family who I had never met, and there's a wife and an adult daughter of just 20 years old in great, great grief. And they had indicated that they're Christians, and they thanked me so much for being there. And they said, Would you, can we go in the room with you? Would you pray? They didn't know I was just in there. I said, can we go in? Would you pray over him? And I said, yeah, absolutely. I so wanted to walk out of that room with him in hand in front of all of those officers. Not for the sake of, wow, another miracle's happened at Kingdom Life, but showing the goodness of God and that his word is true. But I didn't see the breakthrough. Yesterday was an extremely difficult day for me. I never blamed God. I didn't get mad at God. But I asked him, said, Lord, is there something I need to do to get breakthrough the next time? Because I felt that that would have been a catalyst to just cause a breakout of revival through the department throughout the city and just would have been spectacular. So I, without guilt and shame, I just said, Lord, search my heart. Show me what I need to do or, or do differently. And, and I went through this process. And like I said, it wasn't, it wasn't guilt and shame. So then... <clears throat> My day was just thrown a little bit off schedule-wise, and then I sat down to write this outline that I'm preaching now. And I said, the first point is going to be that scripture. Because that's the language of revival. The language of defeat is to, well, let me just avoid that for today. No. The word says, as you go, preach that the kingdom of heaven is here. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out demons. Freely you've received, freely give. So here's the Word of God, here's my experience. I will not do this with the Word of God. I will do this with my experience. And part of doing this with my experience is to declare. So I would love to tell you in the hundreds if not thousands of miracles I've seen over 35 years that Trish and I have prayed personally and you have prayed out in the community, that's all, all wonderful. It's also important to talk about what do we do when we don't get breakthrough. We do what the disciples did when they couldn't cast out the demon. And Jesus said, um, you know, ye of little faith. And they pulled him aside and said, why couldn't we cast it out? And said, well, this kind doesn't come out with prayer unless there's prayer and fasting. So what we've done is we've said every time there's not breakthrough, we need to pray and fast. Well, that's a good practice, but that's not the main point of that story. The main point is that they pulled Jesus aside. They said, what do I have to do to get breakthrough the next time? And maybe it is prayer and fasting. Maybe it's something else in your life that needs to be put in order. Maybe, maybe I couldn't have handled the weight of that kind of success of bringing him back to life, and I would not have been able to handle it. Would I have been able to do what Peter did at the gate beautiful and say, why are you looking at us? It's Jesus. I believe I would have. 
But these are questions that we want to be raw and we want to be real with because it's all about God demonstrating his love and his goodness. And part of that is bringing back, you know why he raises the dead? Because some people go before they're supposed to go. Now, there's some belief systems that would say, well, they take the scripture, um, there's an appointed time for every person to die. And so whenever you die, that's your appointed time. Now, there is an appointed time for every person to die, but if he wants us to raise the dead, then that must not have been their appointed time. I, I, I don't know. That's kind of the way I think. As you go, preach, saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons freely you've received and freely give so relentless risk so I'm just trying to tell you what I'm gonna do about it when I didn't get breakthrough the next time I'm in front of someone that's passed away and has breathed their last I'm gonna believe that they'll breathe again right then in front of me and they will get up because that's what the Bible says to do <sighs> I, I, I can feel and, and not you I, just the spirit in the American church of believers that are mocking what I'm saying right now that mock this portion of Scripture I refuse to give in to the mocking I have no fear of man Jesus is the way the truth and the life he's the only way to the Father he's the only way to heaven and he lives inside of me and he told me to go do these things so I'm gonna quote Catherine Kuhlman that said I'm in sales He's in management. I'm going to do what he says and leave the rest up to him. I will not blame him. I will not curse him. I will say, Lord, I'm going to do it again. I'm going to do it again. You know how you see more people get healed? You pray for more people. You know how you see more people come to Christ? You share your faith more often. Amen? Amen? All right. You guys all right? Number two, which brings me into a good segue for the second point. Relentless risk of discomfort. There is no comfort zone in the kingdom of God. And I was strongly reminded, Rick, in our meeting with Amber, be reminded there is no comfort zone in the kingdom of God. Jesus was always stretching his disciples. And he pushed them just a little bit. Like during a raging storm, he'd tell Peter to get out of the boat. Beckon me and I'll come. Amen? Amen? The Bible says in Galatians <clears throat> chapter 6, verse 2, bear one another's burdens so to fulfill the law of Christ. Bearing the burdens of the earth, bearing the burdens of the lost, bearing the burdens of those in the body of Christ that are in need is uncomfortable at times. It's sacrificial. So this is a part of the language of revival. I mean, we're talking about, do you, want, do you want revival to increase in your life, in the life of our church and on the earth? I know it's a yes, but there's also things that we have to do. There's things that we have to change. Maybe it's the way we're living. We're not living in accordance to the Scripture. I'm not going to get into that now, but I'm going to tell you that the way that you lighten your burdens is carry the burdens of another. Let me say that again. In the kingdom, we lighten our burdens when we carry the burden of another. In the kingdom, you only get to keep what you're willing to give away. No one's hoarding toilet paper in heaven. Now, I know it's, it's the perfect place, so there's no need for it, but my point is no one hoards anything in heaven because there's abundance, and we're supposed to be declaring that world to come into this one. Amen. I was tempted that when we were going to meet again to give first-time guests a little packet of toilet paper, but <laughs> I forgot. Relentless risk, relentless dis discomfort, and relentless courage. We don't need to turn there, but let me just kind of set the stage for you. Here's a man that's been begging since birth. He's crippled. He's at the gate beautiful. Acts chapter 3. It's interesting to know that Jesus walked past him when he was on the earth but didn't pray for him to be healed because that was Peter's assignment down the road after Jesus left the earth. And the man's been begging. He's been crippled from birth. He's never used his legs. There's no muscle conditioning at all. He doesn't even know what it means to move his legs. He's been crippled from birth. 
His legs, his muscles are like jelly. And he's reaching out as Peter and John walk by, and he stretches his hand out begging for money. And Peter says, silver or gold I do not have, but what I do have I give to you. Rise and walk in the name of Jesus. Takes him by the hand, lifts him up, and the man begins to leap and to praise God. Maybe sometimes in ministry, especially in the modern age in the American church, we rely a little bit too much on the silver and gold. So we have the great facilities and we have the technology and we have all of those things and those are great, but those are only tools. They are never meant to replace the raw power of God's love that he demonstrates through healing, signs, wonders, miracles. We don't, you don't even hear the word in most churches today, deliverance, setting people free, casting out demons. You don't hear about it anymore. Why? Because it's not popular. Because if you want a big mega church filled with people, you don't want to rock the boat. I don't want to rock the boat either. I want to get out of the boat and walk on the raging sea and show people that the kingdom of God is everywhere. <laughs> well, I feel better. <laughs> Tune in again next week. In Acts chapter 4, 13, now they're brought before the religious council. Most of you know this well, just two verses, 13 and 14 in the Passion. <clears throat> it says, the council members were astonished as they witnessed the bold courage of Peter and John, especially when they discovered they were ordinary men who had never had religious training. Don't dis the only person that can disqualify you from doing the miracles and the workings of God is you. God's equipped you. The devil doesn't have the power to disqualify you, but your language is either the language of revival or it's the language of defeat. So don't disqualify yourself. The council members were astonished as they witnessed the bold courage, relentless courage we're talking about on this point, of Peter and John, especially when they discovered that they were just ordinary men who'd never had religious training. Then they began to understand, the religious council being, then they began to understand the effect Jesus had on them simply by spending time with them. Wow. Are you reading that? Is it up behind me? Standing there with them was the healed man, and there was nothing further they could say. So when the healed guy is there, you can say anything you want. You can say, yeah, Jesus was this, and he wasn't this, and he's false. You can say what you want, that there's many ways to heaven, but the guy that was dead 15 minutes ago was now standing up talking to you. And all argument goes away. How many of you have told people about your faith? How many of you have gotten into debates and arguments that all it did was frustrate you even more than when you started? Raise your hand if, if that's happened to you. It's happened to me. But when I had a woman that wouldn't come to church after inviting her for a year in a cleaning, dry cleaning store that had a cast, and I prayed for her hand and, and all this injury, and she took it off and was totally healed. She was in church that Sunday. She accepted Christ in the lobby. There was no arguing. Well, did he really part the Red Sea? I don't know if I believe in the burning bush. And I'll know when you're going like my hands healed. Yeah, I want Jesus. <laughs> the kingdom of God is show and tell. Paul said that the kingdom is not in word but is in power. We're going to learn a lot about that next Saturday. How many people are excited about next Saturday? Well, I got something I had to do that's already on the calendar. It's really important, really, than the command of Jesus to get equipped and to do And we have to be delivered from the fear of man, the fear of reputation. <laughs> when we first started the church, <clears throat> we were maybe six months old. We were meeting in the little meeting room at the Holiday Inn that's now the Marriott Courtyard. And I just had gotten done reading, it's before I met Roberts, but I just got done reading his first gospel, God's Generals, man, and I was on fire. And, and I just love the, the romance of the history of those old tent revival days and, and the way they used to do it. And I just loved reading that book, and it just, uh, it just ignited something in me to take more risk. And, and I had seen, like I said, miracles and praying for people before, but man, this just kind of, it was a book that revived me to go further. And I was driving home. We lived in Parrish at the time. I was bivocational. And I was driving down 301, and there was this Methodist church right on 301 that had this big field. And I saw this tent go up. And it said, Old Time Revival Meeting Miracles. And it said every night at whatever it was, 7 o'clock. 
And I said, well, that sounds like fun. I want to I wanna go to that, you know. And, and uh, sure enough, it was very powerful. But prior to my first night going to the meeting, I had to pick up my son from soccer practice at school. And uh, he was sitting next to me. And at the time, he was shorter than me. This was going way back. And I was turning to him, and I was talking, and then going like this. I was looking down, talking, we're driving. And he said, Dad, have you been eating licorice? I said, no, what are you talking about? Man, he goes, your, your, your teeth got all black in them. And so I, I looked into, I know I'm grossing you out, but I looked into the mirror, and basically what they were were I had very old fillings from, you know, a couple of decades ago, and they had oxidized and they turned very dark. How many people know I'm talking about? I said, oh, yeah. He goes, yeah, you know, Dad, you're talking to people up close. and eh. You know, and he was like, he's just being this honest little kid in, in sixth grade. Now he's just this honest 24-year-old kid and still gets on my nerves, but that's another story for another time. So I went to this meeting, and um, Brother S.G. Jones was the one leading the meeting. His wife, Kathy Jones, was playing this old, I can't remember what's the name of it, the old organ that has the spinning thing. What's that, the Hammond, something like that? I can't remember. And it was, it was this old-time it, went, it took us back in time, but the anointing on the worship. And then he got up and he started talking about just the, the unfiltered, raw power of the gospel. And uh, there were, the, the, not, there's, there's already been a couple of sessions, and there were, there were people from the Sarasota Tribune and whatever the big newspapers in Sarasota, they were watching. And um, so at the end of the meeting, he had everybody stand up and he said, all right, I'm going to do, uh, I'm, we're going to pray for healing, but the first thing I want to pray for, is there anybody here that has any problem with their teeth? I want you to come forward. So I, you know, I'm going to be childlike, so I go forward along with about 20 other people, and uh, we, all, we just form this line, there's about 20 of us, like I said, and he comes down off the short platform, and, and he just begins to go down the line, and he just puts his hand on everyone's face. I was about the fourth or fifth one down. And he just puts his hand on our face and he goes, touch. Go to the next person. Touch. And then he gets to me. Touch. And my whole jaw turned numb like Novocaine. It was immediate. And I said, all right, something's, something's happening. So he goes down everybody line and then he goes back up to the stage. And he says, I'll call more people down for healing. But then he points to me. Now, we're only a few months old as a church. I'm definitely the new kid on the block, meeting in this little hotel room, believing for heaven on earth. And he, he, um, he looks at me and he says, did you have dark fillings, black fillings, and oxidized fillings? He had a word, a knowledge. He never looked into my mouth. My mouth was closed. And I said, I did. And he says, come on up here. And then he calls me up on the platform. And then he calls and he goes, now you newspaper boys, you come up here but bring your own flashlights. And so they come up and they put a flashlight almost in my mouth and they go, what do you see? They go, bright silver. All my fillings turned bright silver. Isn't that wild? All right. So the meeting went on, and I just, man, I fell in love with this guy. So I had an extra copy of God's Generals. So I was about 10 minutes from the house, and I, I went home. It was late at night, and I'm like, I'm like a little kid. I'm, I'm, in, the, I'm in my bathroom with a flashlight looking at, my, looking at my fillings, going, man, I got all new fillings. And I grabbed the book, and I stayed real late. And one of his associates came up to me afterwards and says, man, God spoke to me when I saw you. You got fire to heal people in your hands. And, and that was just another word, and we've seen that. But let me tell you, you all have fire in your hands to heal. So it was pretty cool. So then uh, about a week later, I showed up at one of the ministerial association meetings because I was new in the community. I was trying to get to know the other pastors. And as soon as I walked in, apparently there was a picture of me in the Sarasota newspaper that's now on the internet. It's still there. I found it not too long ago with a newspaper guy with a flashlight pointing in my mouth. And I didn't know who this guy was and he knew who I was because I was in the newspaper with the filling miracle and he mocked me. Mocked it. His ministry doesn't exist anymore, by the way. Now, I don't say that 
in any vengeful thing. But let me tell you, when you mock the miracles of God, you better be careful. Because it wasn't hocus pocus or you do that voodoo that you do so well. That was the power of Jesus Christ giving me brand new fillings to remove whatever that oxidation is that can actually make your body sick so there was actually purpose in it. Let's give the Lord a hand clap. And he just happens to be known for miracles and teeth. That just seems to be how God really uses him. There were other people that, the, um, that they looked at the... Uh, the reporters looked in and they had fillings replaced with gold and they, had, they were engraved with angels' wings and crosses. It's called signs and wonders. You know how you know it's a wonder? It makes you wonder. And you can say, well, that's over the top, that's crazy. I mean, read your Bible. I mean, Moses is having a conversation with a burning bush that does not burn. Moses throws down his rod, it turns into a snake and swallows the magician snake. And we have to have childlike faith if we're going to have the language of revival. Because when we can't explain things except to say God broke through and that's God, the unbeliever is going to believe. Look at some of the shows that have been on TV that have gotten popular these last couple of years. Paranormal this, spiritual that paranormal this, ghosts and all, that, that's even more popular than ever before. Why? Because we're designed for the supernatural. We're designed for supernatural encounters. But the devil comes in and he counterfeits them. But Jesus is the real McCoy. Jesus is the authentic. So I don't care how you want to move around and spiritualize. If it's not Jesus, it's the devil because there's only the kingdom of light and the kingdom of darkness that wants to influence the kingdoms of this world. Somebody say amen. All right, next. Let me just get, let me try to wrap this up. So we have to eliminate the fear of man. Number four, relentless compassion. And when Jesus went out, Matthew 14, 14, when Jesus went out, he saw the great multitude and he was moved with compassion for them and he healed their sick. He was moved with compassion. This word compassion I've taught on before is something that you literally feel in your gut. You're moved with compassion. It's not just this, oh, isn't that sad, isn't that sweet, oh, I'm sorry for your loss. You're, 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 you're wrecked by what you've just learned about somebody's life. He was moved with compassion, and then from it, he did something about it and healed their sick. Ecclesiastes says there's a time to laugh, there's a time to cry, there's a time to mourn. Yesterday for me, when I got back from the hospital, I was just, I, I thought, well, am I feeling depression, which is unhealthy. It wasn't depression, I was mourning. I was mourning for my, my family in blue. I was mourning for his wife and his daughter. And I was also mourning for the opportunity that could have happened for God to show himself strong. And so yesterday, I was just, I had a very difficult day. I mourned. And you know, before I got that call at 6.30, I had woken up about 4.30 in the morning just wide awake. And I said, oh man, this is going to be a great day. This is the day the Lord has made. I actually quoted that scripture. I will be glad and rejoice in it. So before my day ended, I made sure I rejoiced. And I gave him a sacrifice of praise. Because I was going to come in here, and I was going to be done with my mourning and be charged to encourage you to do the things that not I'm telling you to do, that Jesus is telling you to do. So I can't tell you enough how the timing of next Saturday's conference is of the Lord, and I really hope you will come. Number five, relentless prayer to be like Jesus. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 11, 1, imitate me just as I also imitate Christ. I wrote a prayer this morning, very short. I said, purge my heart, O Lord, of anything that is not true that is not pure, and that is not authentic. I want to be like Jesus. I used to want to be like Bruce Lee. I want to be like Jesus. He's my champion. He's my hero. And I'm thankful for the influences that I have of great men of God that are walking the earth today. And, and I honor them and I glean from them, but my benchmark is Jesus. He's the benchmark that never fails to love, never fails to forgive, never fails to have breakthrough. When he walked the earth, the Bible says, everyone he prayed for was healed. That's my benchmark. 
Do you want to be like him? How many of you want to be like him? How many of you want to be more like him? You know, when we worship, we sometimes raise one hand because in school we raise a hand when we have the answer. How many people know Jesus is the answer? Raise your hand. And then we say, but I want to be like him, so we raise both hands because that's full surrender. Amen. Amen. How many of you are ready to fully surrender? Here's your altar call. How many of you are going to fully surrender to Jesus? Would you stand? And you bow your heads one more time. Those of you that are watching online, I want to invite you to do what we're about to do here. And number one is if you don't know the Lord, if you don't know Jesus Christ as Savior and King, with every head bowed, with every eye closed, if you're here and you'd like to say, you know what, I don't know him, I'm not sure if I know him, or I did and I'm away. If you're in this room, I want you to raise your hand and you want to get right with God. Is there anyone in the room that wants to get right with Jesus? We'll just wait a moment. I see your hand all the way in the back. You can put it down. Bless the Lord. Those of you that are online, just put in the comment field, I'm getting right with Jesus right now. So let's all pray this prayer out loud. Lord Jesus, I believe that you were born of a virgin. You lived a sinless life. You died on a cross. You rose again. You ascended into heaven. And you sent your spirit to live in us. I renounce my old life. I renounce, I renounce, say it with me, the influence of Satan. I renounce all false religion. And now I receive you, Jesus. I receive you, Jesus. I receive you, Jesus, as my Savior, as my Lord, and as my King. I am home. You are my Father, in Jesus' name. And now, Holy Spirit, baptize me with fire. Baptize me with power. Baptize me in love. Baptize me in courage. And send me out into darkness to be a light to this world. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done in my life, in my life, in my life as it is in heaven. Amen. Amen. And amen. Let's go wild for Jesus one more time before we go. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hey. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, all oh my soul, and all that is within me. Shout to God with a voice of triumph. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Amen. Amen. Let's get out there and give them heaven. Wednesday at 7. Love you guys. Make sure you introduce yourself to people you don't know. See you soon.